This video was made when I was in my deep workflow state. So please do not watch this video if you are currently engaged in any other activities like running, cycling, gymming because it will be a complete waste of more than one hour if you are not following along with me. If you are not taking down the notes, right? So save this video for later and only come back when you are ready with pen and paper or a notebook or you are able to copy and paste the commands in your terminal. So what you can do, I advise, set up two monitors. In one monitor, you are the video and on another monitor you are running the commands with me so for that what you can do you can just open the link below and from there you can directly copy and paste the commands for quick once you are done with that revise again and learn the process and if you have any doubt please feel free to comment down we will be happy to help you so let's start the video now. So let me first explain you how does this amazing bot works. So for example, you have a PC or you can have a server also, any cloud server, right? Any cloud server, AWS, Azure or Google Cloud. So I'll just mention AWS here. Then you have the fractured, your bot, okay? F which is installed in your PC or cloud server both one and same thing then this FT connects with the exchanges it can be any exchange it can be Binance it can be Bybit as long as it is supported by the CCXG library okay so this exchange provide you the API keys then you configure those API keys in Fractured and then you can communicate with the exchanges. So that's the basic idea. Okay, now I'm gonna tell you what are the amazing features which you are getting in this free open source platform and so many features which you can't even expect from a paid application. Okay, so these are the amazing features. So in this bot, you can develop your own strategy. Although there are hundreds of strategies freely available online, I will provide the link of those strategies below. So what you can do if you are good in Python or Pandas, that's fine. You can develop your own strategies. If not, then you can use the already available strategies and you can learn and you can optimize those, right? So you can develop your strategy and then you can download historical data. Like if you want to download from any exchange, so you can can just mention in your config file that you want to download data from Binance, Bybit or Qcoin and out of this and you can also mention on which coin like BTC, Ethereum, Solana or Ripple and you can even mention the time frame, 1 minute time frame, 5 minutes, 15 minutes, 1 hour one day it's very good you just have to mention the exchange the pairs and the time frame even download these multiple time frames in just single command and you can even download the data of multiple like hundreds of pairs along with these old time frames like you can mention any number of time frames which are available in the ccx library and you can mention the any number of pairs but that should be available in the exchange okay then you can backtest your strategy on the data you have just downloaded right it's very amazing features and then you can optimize your parameters so this fractured will employ a machine learning method and then you can optimize your buy sell take profit and stop loss trailing stop means where to buy where to sell and where to take profit and what should be the best stop loss so it will optimize your strategy i'll show you shortly how all these things works it is just the overview and then you can select markets so this means that two options one is to you can just mention a static list like if you just want to trade with only five pairs so you can mention BTC, Ethereum, Ripple, Solana or BNB or you can mention a volume pair list. So in volume pair list, what happens? It will select based on the volumes like the top five currency, which is having the highest volume. Okay, this is also a very good feature. And then you can run your strategy and try run mode means it will be in a simulated money and it will like not use your real money or you can deploy it with the real money, the live trade mode. Okay, run using edge means it will find the best historical trade expectancy and then it will like allow reject the market to trade. And that is based on the risk of a percentage of your capital. Okay, so it is optional. And then you can control and monitor. You can control your bot with the telegram. It is very amazing feature. And you can also control your bot with a web UI. Like if you are away from your system or server, then you can directly open your telegram. You can give commands from there and it will execute those commands. It is very amazing feature. And last but not the least, you can analyze and you can further backtest and then you can store your data. And there are many more features. So now let's move to the next stage which is creating an AW server. So this will be having mainly five parts. So the first part will be creating and securing a virtual cloud server. So it will be having multiple sub parts. Then the second part is installing trading bot frac trade. And third part will be trading bot configuration. So we will see how to configure the various kinds of file. And then the fourth part will be downloading data 
testing past performance, improving the bot, and then we will visualize the results. We will plot the results. And the last but not the least, we'll be just touching on how to create your own strategy. So let's get started. Okay, so in order to create a virtual server, you need to go to the AWS console. I'll provide the link below. So here, if you don't have the account, you can create one and then log into the console. So now, so now I am logged into the AWS console. Here you will see EC2. So EC2 is a service from AWS. So from where we can launch our server, so just click on that. So initially, when you create a new account, you will be getting a free instance. So you can run that for around 730 hours. So once you open that, you just have to click on launch instance. OK, so you can give any name to here. So I'm just giving AI bot. OK, and then you have to select your desired OS. So here there are multiple OS available like AWS, Mac OS, Ubuntu, Windows, Red Hat, SUSE and many more. But here you will be selecting Ubuntu. You can select as per your requirement. OK and then instance type is a t2.micro so it's uh, the smallest of the instance and it is free right so it is in the free tier so when you create a new account you will be able to create a free server and then here in the key pair login you have to click on the create new key pair without this you won't be able to log in through a remote console so you just click on here then you can give any name to here so we will be giving the name ai bot key one okay because i already have a key with this name so that's why i gave the one and then just click on create key pair your key will be downloaded right so now you just leave these defaults create security group we will see this in a bit then i think we are good to go so just click on launch instance okay so it will take few moments after that it will show you a success status so just click on this id and here you can see that the instance trait is pending. So it will take few moments to get it started. You just have to wait for a few moments and you can just click here to refresh. And once it is running, then you can log in from here, right? So there are two options. One is to directly log in from here. So when you click here, click on connect. So it will connect to your instance. Okay. And here also connect. So here you can see that it will take few and here you are logged into your AWS instance. So here you can check your host name and you can check the services and you can check the, your top command output and like you can do whatever you want here. So this is one thing, but this is not always possible to access the AWS console and then log in from there. So it's better to connect with this console from a remote terminal, like from Putty or from your Windows machine or from your Linux machine, like from a remote connection, you have to connect this without going to this console. Okay. So for that, if you remember, we downloaded a key, AI bot key one.pan. Okay. So with that, we will be able to log in. So what we will do, we will open our command line terminal and so here when we go to our download folder here you can see we have the key ai bot key one dot pam correct so when you run the command ssh and i i and then you can give the path of your key so currently i am in the download so that's why i just gave the file name if you are in different directory then you can just give the full path okay then ubuntu is the default user while creating a new instance okay and then you have to enter the ip okay okay so when you go to the instances here you can see you can keep a filter here running instances and then from when you click here you will get the public ip address you just need to copy this public ip address and go to your terminal and hit enter okay so now you are connecting to your console via ssh so ssh means secure shell right it's the protocol through which we can connect with any other device via secure shell okay then we are giving the key and then the username and then the ip or host name of the cloud server so here we don't need to enter any password right so when we click enter so it is giving a error it says load key bad permissions okay and it says one more thing that permissions for this key are too open means the permissions should be different so what we can do we can just change the permission of okay here is the file ai bot and when we check the permission you can see that this is 644 right read write for the user r for the groups like read for the groups and read also for the others so we can make it ch mode 
600 means only user can read and write and other than that neither group or nor others can read and write okay and then just pass the key name okay so now when we check the permission again you can see that we have 600 correct okay so now we again run the command okay let me clear the screen so it's better okay now i again run the command to login okay the same command when i hit enter it takes me to the server right so here you can see that we are into the server and here you can check the host name and check the top command output where you can see the cpu consumption memory consumption swap consumption and the services which are running via which user pid and this is a very useful command okay so now our goal is to okay so one more thing like if you are watching this video then it's better to open another terminal so you can follow along with me so it's better that you also learn along with me and practice the commands simultaneously so what you can do you can open this portal and here i have this article which have the step by step commands so you can just follow this right so what we will do we will just minimize it and to save the time we will be following this command right so okay i just make it this way okay so now our agenda is to change the server host name correct when you run the command host name you see this weird ip right so we want a neat and clean host name so what we can do you can change the host name right so to change host name what we will do we will first back up the original host name file so to change host name what we will do we will just copy and paste this command here this will just back up the original host file and so it says that permission denied means currently we are trying to change the configuration file via the ubuntu user so what we can do we can just one option is to go to root another is to add sudo so we will prefer to go to root okay and now when we run the command again uh to back up the file uh, we are able to right you can see here and then what we will do we will we will echo the name so what it will do it will like first print this gt bot 1 and then then this gt bot 1 will be keyed in this host name file right so I hit enter and when I check this host name file, it has this name. And when I check the host name, it is still IP. So what we can do, we can reboot the server, right? So I will just log out and log in and it is still same. So it is still same. So what I will do, I will just run the command reboot and meanwhile i can just uh, keep it okay when i try to log in again now i can log in and you can see that the host name has been changed and when i run the command host name it is changed right and you can check the uptime it is one minute means it was rebooted and up from last one minute okay so now come back to our screen okay now we want to secure our server so what is the benefit of that so that if someone tries to access our server via root user he or she should not be right because if someone gains the access of root then it's very dangerous so what you can do we will be adding a new user and we will access the server with that new user and then we will disable the root user right so we know that which user so that the server will be more secure correct so for that we can run the command add user so here it is asking me new password so i will just provide new password and then full name i can give anything and then i'll just hit enter and information correct yes and we have the new user right got ready you can just check with the command id got ready so you have this user with the uid gid and groups but as we are able to run sudo with this command we will not be able to run sudo with this user okay so now we want to give sudo permission to this user so this user can also perform the actions which are being performed by ubuntu user right so what we can do we can just add this new user to the sudo group right so this is for like hyphen g is for secondary group the primary group is go ready and secondary group is sudo okay when i hit enter when i again run the command id and the username so here you can see that it has assigned the 
secondary group also which has the gid of 27 right now what we want to do we want to check the root user one more information so in unix etc shadow files contains the password in encrypted form and the etc password file contains the user details right so when i check the shadow file and grab the root so it says that permission denied why because i didn't put the sudo right so now it is fine so you can see that sudo is enabled right now because so when there is no exclamation mark in the password section means it is enabled so what we will do we will just disable the root user you just run this command sudo user mode hyphen l hyphen hyphen l means lock the user when we run the, this command and when we again check the shadow here you can see that it has the exclamation mark means now the root user is disabled right if you want to unlock this again you can just put hyphen u here and run the command it will be done right so now what we want we want that we should be able to log in to this server via the goat ready user okay so i'll just show you an example when we go out and here we were able to log in right when we mentioned the key and the username ubuntu we were able to log in right so when i try to just change the username go ready and hit enter so it says that permission denied right public key permission denied so now what we can do that instead of ubuntu we can log in with this user also go ready okay so we will again log in to the server okay and so here we will perform few steps okay so we will switch to the user go ready now we are in the go ready user and here we will make a directory sfh okay and then we will give the permission ch mode 700 to this and then again we create a file now in the sfh directory authorized keys okay and we provide the permission 600 to this file okay okay now i open another window and so now our goal is to make go ready user also able to log in with the same key right when we check in the downloads file we have this key pan key okay we want that like ubuntu go ready should also be able to log in with this user another option to just download another key and you can configure otherwise you can configure like one key for the multiple users so we are doing this way so just run the command ssh keygen hyphen y okay and here you give this path so what this command does that it is extracting the public key from this spam file okay we just need to click on copy and we'll go back to our server and here you run the command cat ssh authorized so what it will do when we hit enter so it will ask us to enter any input here so we will just paste the public key we copied from that pam file okay so what this will do it will just append this public key into this authorized file okay just hit enter and control d okay now you can go back like you can log out of the server and now you try to log in again with the goat ready user if you remember earlier we were not able to log in because it was showing the permission denied issue now when i hit enter i am able to log in right with the goat ready user correct so this is how we were able to log in with our new user goat ready okay so the now next step is to server hardening with shd config file so here what we will do we will modify various parameters in order to make our server more secure right so okay, let's first view the content of this file so when we hit enter so there are so many lines so what you can do you can just cat and the file name and if you don't want to see the commented lines you can just do grab hyphen v and so what it will do it will just ignore the commented lines hit enter and here you can see that this is the output of the file and only these lines are uncommented correct so what you can do we will just copy these files from here i'll just explain you in a bit and uh, etc ssh ssh shd config okay and it says permission denied so i can use sudo here okay so this is the error you might also get so what you can do you can check first go ready go ready is already in the sudo so it should be able to write so when i open the file sudo vim etc ssh 
SHD config and okay so okay so now cat etc ssh ssd config okay you can ssd config and you can provide the password here and here okay so instead of like uh, doing this you can just remove all the lines here okay by pressing the command d and then what we will do we will just paste these lines into this file okay so now when i insert so now i'll explain you so we are using protocol 2 okay and port 1091 right for the ssh so the default port is 22 like if you remember when we try to log in with ssh we were not mentioning any port means the default port for ssh is 22 so if we make it any obscure port like anything you can have here so i am making it 1091 so anybody who wants to log in via the ssh they need to know the port right which port we are using for that because they will by default try to but best but as we already disabled that so they will not be able to log in so they need to know the port and which we have mentioned in this config file okay and then here we have denied the permit root login so root cannot log in and only one user is allowed here go ready right so no password authentication means with only the key anybody will be able to log in correct and then these different parameters here and also the max auth try is three so after three uh, wrong attempts the account will be locked okay so i will just hit enter okay so now if you directly try with that then it will be a issue so what you need to do now you need to do few more things first you need to install and configure a firewall so what you can do you can first check the status of firewall so when you check it is inactive right so if it is not installed you can install with this command if it is installed then it's well and good so you can just run these commands so what these commands are doing this command is allowing this command is allowing port 1091 tcp hit enter rules updated right then i will run the command limit so it will limit and then logging is medium so login enabled and then when i check the status you can see here it is still inactive so you need to enable this service enable this uh, ufw service ufw stands for uncomplicated firewall right so now if you hit enter it is enabled okay and you can check the status status is active and we have allowed 1091 port okay and now what you can do you can just restart the service so when you restart the service okay now one more thing you can check you can check on port that whether it is listening or not so when you check here it is the port 1091 it is listening right and one more thing you can check you can just check the status of ssd service so when you check the status here you can see that it is listening on 1091 right so it is the confirmation so now you can easily log in right so before logging in don't log out from this terminal you can open an another terminal okay and here you try to log in on port 1091 okay so first you go to the downloads folder because that's where is the key and i will just find the command from history okay so from here now i try to log in so i cannot log in because by default ssh is taking the port 22 so i will not be able to log in so when I put hyphen P1091 and then I try and when I try with the port 1091 but still I'm not able to log in. So what's the issue? Okay, here the issue is of the security groups of AWS means you have to allow this port also from the security groups, correct? So for that what you can do, you just open your AWS console and like just check, check mark on this and go to your security tab and click on security groups here you have to click on this edit and inbound rules okay from here you can add a rule custom tcp 
port you know 1091 and anywhere ip performance means any ip can log in here but the recommended thing is to just allow the only the ips from which you are logging so it's more secure but now we are allowing from all the ips and i can also delete this rule and click on save rules and now we try again okay with the same port and now we are able to log in okay so now the server is more secure means root user cannot log in and with ssh also port 22 is disabled and we have a kept a obscure port which no one knows except us so it's more secure right and now we will just enable the unattended upgrades means if there is any upgrade from the ubuntu then it will be upgraded right so i just run this command install unattended upgrades and provide the password it is done okay now last but not the least configuring time server so now when you check the time it is currently 421 utc so you can set as per your time zone so currently i am in singapore so i will set as my time zone so now you can run this command to list time zones right so i will grab my time zone singapore time zone so with this command it will list all the time zone and then i will grab my singapore time zone so it is the asia singapore so i will set my time zone as singapore done and then i will install the system d time sync d service here so just hit enter yes and it is downloading in progress so it is for the time sync and now when i check the status of the service it is active and running okay and now again check the okay now you check the time date ctl so here you can check the server it is from the ntp.ubuntu.com right and if you check the time also it is 12:22 means it is my local time but the server is ntp.ubuntu.com so i can change this like to my singapore server right to the ntp singapore servers so what you can do you can just run this command so it will back up the original time sync d config file and then here and here and here you can mention the like the ntp from your time zone so we can just go to google and search ntp singapore and these are the singapore pools so i will just copy these and and i will just uncomment this line okay and then again you can just go here and restart the time sync service okay and now when you check the status of ntp here you can see that the time is uh, syncing with the sg pool right the sg dot singapore.pool.ntp.org now you can see that the time is syncing with the singapore ntp servers so this is how you configure the server you secure the server and you configure the ntp so the part one is finished now we will proceed to the part two which is installing the trading bot software and which is uh, fret trade so let's move to that part so here you can check that we are in the home go ready directory so first of all you have to install docker and docker compose so docker is a container application like a mini os inside the operating system just let me know if you want to understand more about docker i will make other videos for the docker so so it says that unable to locate package and docker compose so means we are getting this unable to locate package docker so now whenever you get this problem unable to locate you just have to update your package manager right so what you can do you can just run the command update here and it will take a few moments and it will be updated so 
now it is updated so when you again run the command we can see that we are able to install so just hit enter and wait for a few moments okay so now we have downloaded the package docker and docker compose so now after installation you can check the status of the docker service so with the command sudo systemctl status docker so it is up and running so now we are in the code ready directory okay so after that we will create the directory uh, where www ft user data hit enter it says permission denied why because we didn't use the sudo here so just sudo okay now you move to this folder and when you check you are here okay so what you can do now now you download the docker compose file okay so you just curl this command copy and paste and when you check again we forgot to add the sudo so now when you check you have the file you have the docker compose file here okay so now you just need to run the command sudo docker compose pull so it say compose is not a docker command so if that's the case you can just use docker compose pull because in mac it works with like without this hyphen but in ubuntu you need to add this hyphen here right so just run the command docker i will just make changes here also okay uh, for your convenience so what it will do it will pull the docker compose file which is mentioned in the this docker compose file right so i'll just show you in a bit what is the content of this file so it is pulling the docker image and extracting now okay so now when we check docker compose images we have this image which says tag is stable and this is the repository right okay now we see the content of the docker compose file okay so here you can see that it mentioned the image which is stable right and also also the ports default port and also the log file db url config strategy paths i will explain you these in a bit so for now we check few more things so we have checked that we have docker image is already downloaded so here you can check and okay now we create the directory structure so sometime what happens when we copy from the website here we have the hyphen hyphen but it somehow it changed to single hyphen and again in mac it's run with the space but in ubuntu you have to enter the hyphen here in mid of this so what you can do just sudo and paste the command and you need to change this manually and you can just change and save in your uh, local and also this two hyphen and here also you can just remove the space and enter the hyphen when you run this command hit enter and it is created right you can check that the user directory is created correct now what we want to do we want to create the configuration file so here also uh, same thing you have to enter like here i'll just show you here you have to enter to hyphen uh, remove the space enter hyphen so i will just clear screen sudo and enter right so what wherever the hyphen is you need to change them and here also hyphen hyphen and compose hit enter and now it will ask you few questions so dry run yes stake currency usdt and uh, stake amount for now unlimited max open trades you will keep by default three and yes and uh, usds like for now uh, we'll be using the buy bit so we can mention buy bit and for now we are not enabling but we will enable it in this video itself so for now you can just keep it simple no rest api no and now you can see that in user directory your config json is created okay and 
when you go here and when you check all the things you have entered like max open trades take currency stake amount and dry run enable true and all those things so we will just uh, see it in a while before that what we can do we can check the process of the docker for that you can just run the command docker ps means process hyphen a so it will show you all the process of docker so when you maximize this you can see that it is like this process was created 10 minutes ago and then it exited so currently it is not running when you check with ps it is not running right so in a it shows you all the process which was created and terminated but without a it shows the current process so generally you will be using this command with the current process okay and to start and stop you can just uh, mention the sudo docker start and the container name and stop and the container name correct and again if you want to install any other image you can change the tag to any other tag like uh, latest dev you can change and then again you pull the file or you can pull the image or you can make the change in, in your uh, docker compose file which we have discussed already so when you go back and when you check in the docker compose file here you can make the changes to stable to dev or latest and when you run the command again docker compose pull it will pull that image okay this is the basic for now now we will understand the config file okay i will just maximize it and when we go to user directory and when i open the config file sudo vim config file so let's have a look at this now okay so here this is the max open trades Three, means simultaneously how many trades a docker instance can hold right so by default it is three but you can change as per your requirement stake currency is usdt you can make it to other also like btc eth but generally we have usdt so it is by default usdt stake amount is unlimited so stake amount is the formula for stake amount is like here the tradable balance ratio is 0 0.99 right and here you have in your dry run wallet thousand dollar like 0 0.99 multiplied by 1000 becomes 990, right? 990 divided by 3 becomes 330. So means per trade, it will be like the stake amount will be 330. So you can make it a little bit smaller. Like if you make it 0 0.8 means it will be using your 80% of your available balance. Like when you make it 0 0.6, okay. So it will use your 60% of your balance. So three divided by 60 means 20. So 20% per trade. So it will be $200, right? So this is how it is calculated. And when dry run true means it will be like simulating your trades, whether it's in back testing or in a live trade. It will not take your real money but when you make it false and if your account is connected with your exchange then definitely it will take money from your real account so it will like trade with real money okay then here you can change the trading mode so it has spot it has futures you can change it to futures like i'll just show you the required parameters if you have any doubt in any any other parameter just let me know in the comments i will definitely reply that okay here Okay, here the exchange, the name is Vibit. If, if your exchange name is different like Binance or Qcoin, you can change that. And the key and secret you will be getting from your exchange, the API key and the secret key. So make sure it is safe and secure with you. Do not share with any other. And then here is the pair whitelist. So in pair whitelist, whatever the currency, whatever the coins you are trying to trade, you can mention here BTC USDT, ETH USDT, and here the blacklist, like for which the coins you don't want to trade, right? You don't want to trade. Like you can for the Binance, you have to blacklist BNB and so some other coins also which you don't want to trade. And here in the pair list, it is volume pair list. So by default, it will take the like maximum 20. So the 20 most like 20 highest volume pairs, it will take by default from the exchange you have mentioned. Okay. And while back testing, you have to make it static. So we will do that in a minute. And then in Telegram, if you want to control and monitor your this bot with Telegram, you have to make it true. And you will get your token and chat ID from your Telegram. I will show you in a bit. And API server by default it is 127 so it's your local host and the port is 8080 and you have to here make changes in username and password so you have to give the username and password and here the boat name okay 
now our next target is to like if you want to like make any other config file you can make and you can connect that with your main config file okay so i'll show you this to you later now we will go to the section where we can enable the boat web interface right like we have to make changes in two files so one is the config.json and another is the docker compose file okay so by default when we check the file config.json here you can see in the api server it is enabled is false and listen ip address is 127 127 means it will listen only on the loop back address correct so if we try to access with 127 we will not be able to access correct so currently we are in cloud server right aws server so what we can do we can first make the this false to true correct and then make the ip address to all uh, zero. Zero, 0 means it will listen on all the interfaces correct so just hit enter and again in the username and password you can enter your desired username and password here so one is enabled should be true listen ip address should be zero 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 on cloud and local also you can do it same A port is by default leave it as 8080 and username and password then you can just save it now you open the docker compose file okay in docker compose file you can just leave it like that so Again, like it will listen on all the interfaces. Okay. It will bind the port 8080 to 8080. We can even change this port also. Let me know if you want to know how we can do that configuration. But for this video, we will just make it 8080. Correct. So I will just hit enter. And now what we can do, we can just docker compose down. And now again, we start this docker container. So when we do that, what we have to do, we have to go to our Amazon instance from there. We need to find the IP address. Okay, so you go to instance, running instance. You go to running instances, click on here. And now you copy this IP address and you go to your browser and enter this IP address and enter the port number. So when you hit enter, you can see that you are able to access the bot. And when you click here, you have to enter the uh, boat name so if you remember we haven't mentioned the boat name correct you can mention the username and password and you can even uh, mention the boat name so what you can do you can just go back and cancel this and go to cd user and here just open your config file so here by default the boat name is fractured and i have entered the username and password also fractured and now I can first down and then I can up it. So now I will up this in the detached mode. Okay. So now when I open and I refresh this, it is not running. So it will take few moments. So just keep on refreshing because it takes few moments to start the container. So, okay. Now it is started. So you can enter the fractured and you can copy the same username and password username and password and hit enter so you can see that you are in the dashboard here and as of now we haven't entered any specific data we have just one pair btc usdt and that's it this is how we can access the fractured web ui let's minimize it and now we move to our next so in this we will learn how we can control and monitor our fractured boat via telegram it's very easy you just have to get the token and chat id from your telegram and then enter those values here so i'll just show you how to do that here you can see in the telegram you have to make it true then token id and chat id okay so i will just log in into my telegram okay so now we go to telegram and we search for the bot father okay so when you click that then you enter the command new bot okay so it will give you a new bot so it will ask you for the name so we can give here ai bot and demo the name so it says that it must end in bot so i can give it ai bot demo again bot okay ai bot demo bot and then it gives the token now we have the name token so in this so in the config file what it requires it requires the token and again the chat id so for chat id what you can do you can just search for the get id bot so in get id bot what you have to do you have to click on start like you have to enter the command start here 
actually if this is your first time then you click on start it will give you the id because i have already done this so i do have the chat id so i will just copy that here okay so in the chat id i will copy here and enter the chat id then again token id also i can copy from here so here is the token id and i have just make it to true and just save it and you again can down it and now you can up it so you will see that you will get some notifications here you can like search for your bot name here so your name was ai bot demo bot right it was the name of the bot and when you click here it says the status is already running right means we are able to control that and for more details like there are multiple things you can add in the telegram so for that you can go to the official documentation or else you can visit our page also we have mentioned all the commands by which you can access this like you can directly give commands from here start stop and let me show you corrected so when you go here you can see the okay so these are the commands like there are multiple commands also but uh, this is the keyboard command right what you can do you can just copy it copy this keyboard and you go to your file you go to your file and below the chat id just enter a comma and just indent it so you can see now that just hit enter and you would like to again down and now you just down and again start it so you can just up maybe if there is any code issue it will just throw the error so just wait for a while and see if there is any issue so it says that application has started and if it gives the status running then it's fine so now we can go to our telegram bot and there we can see that it is giving us the data like the exchange by bit and stake per trade is this minimum roi and uh, strategy sample strategy it is giving us the data from the uh, strategy and config file so means we are able to access our bot with web ui and even we can access and control our bot with the telegram okay Okay, now we talk about the part four. In this, we will be discussing how to download data, backtest, hyper-optimize, and visualizing the results, like the plotting of the data. Okay, so here, as we already, like when we check in the config file, we have the BTC USDT, right? So when I try to download data with this command, so in this, we have 30 days and time frame is five minutes. So when we click enter, it will download the data. So you can see it has downloaded the data of five minutes. What I can do, I can like mention here five minutes, one hour also, four hour also, correct. And in days, I can mention anything like 300, 40, 60, whatever. And I can even mention the time range, like from that date to that date. That depends. There are so many parameters you can find on the documentation, but it's just like overview. So let's say I want to download data of BTC USDT, which mentioned in this config.json file from last 20 days. And the time frame is five minutes, one hour and four hours. When I click enter, it will take few moments and then it will download the data. You can see that it has downloaded the one hour four hour and five minutes already right so this is how we can download okay so now we back test so what we can do actually there was a typo i will just make the changes in the website and for now i will just add run here and when i run this command so it will take the strategy a sample strategy from here and the data from the config json right so when i hit enter it takes few moments and it will give us the results of the back testing when I maximize it and here you can see that it has given the results and in BTC like it started with 1000 and ended with 957 with the absolute profit of negative 42%. It was just a sample strategy so we can't expect a profit here. Okay so this is how it works and when you want to create your own strategy so how can you do that. So when we open this sample strategy file to do the 
simple here you can see that in every strategy you will having like definitely you will be using pandas right so you will be importing the libraries in the top then here you will be importing the technical indicators and then you can mention your class name is this sample strategy like if you are making a strategy on macd so you can mention your macd strategy and it should be the like you can pass the arguments here right and I will explain these strategies in detail in the future videos. It is just overview. And here it is the can short means like short can be done only in future. So it is false here, right? But when you are trading in future, so you can make it true in your strategy if you are developing. And here the minimal ROI is like in 60 minutes, it is 1%, 30 minutes, it's 2%, and in zero minutes, 4%. If it's done, then it will exit the trade. Stop loss is 10%, and trailing stop is false now in this. So, like, this is very easy if you just learn basic Python and pandas then at least you can make the modifications in the strategies which is already existing and you can uh, combine those strategies and make your own so it's not that difficult here you can see the time frame is five minutes there are many more things so i will be explaining the strategies in the future videos so stay tuned with us we'll see you in future videos